Hello, I'm Thibaut here at DjangoCon Europe 2021 Sprints. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing the accessibility of a project called Django Postgres Metrics, kindly provided to us by Marcus Holterman. I'm recording this for the purpose of teaching people how accessibility audits are done and also just as a way to record the issues we might encounter throughout the audit. It's 11 hours. Um, so this project, Django Postgres Metrics, is quite an interesting example for us because it's kind of a textbook uh, Django third-party app where the code is on GitHub. The project itself uh, consists of customizations to the Django admin, so adding more views onto the admin and uh, the documentation for the project is in read the docs with the default theme um, so i would suspect lots of the issues we might come up with we actually come from those learning projects rather than necessarily what happens in this metrics project um, i have done a quick uh, scoping of the audits so we look at the html templates in github we look at the actual ui in the django admin uh, this is what matters, but I was quite also always like to look at the templates first if I can when I do an audit. We look at the docs in read the docs. Um, again, they use the default Sphinx RTD theme, so any issues might be with that theme rather than the actual docs, but worthwhile nonetheless. And finally, we look at the docs in the README because people might not think of this, but it's always important for the README to be accessible. Methodology, uh, quick bird's eye view, we'll use the browser extension called Accessibility Insights, which bundles um, the Axe checker, as well as some semi-automated tests. We look at keyboard navigation, color contrast, dark mode support, uh, uh, right to left language support, and then we'll spend some time with screen reader navigation with voiceover in Safari. And yeah, let's get going. Um, just so you know, in the bottom right of the recording, we have the Gather Town UI from the sprints. We have a visualizer for my keyboard shortcuts and then we have me. <laughs> and yes, the templates. So I always quite like to get started with this because it's usually a good indicator of things to look into further. Um, I believe most of the UI from this comes from uh, the Django admin itself though. Okay. So I can see there is some, some additional styles for right to left language support, which is interesting to test for us then. You can see there is a table that has a caption, so that's pretty great. I see that the strings are marked from translation, which is exactly what you'd want. Title as well. Hmm. It might not be needed to have both the title and the text there, but we'll have a look at that later. Um, table body. Okay, it's quite nice to see that uh, the header cells have been properly marked as th with the scope of row. That's quite important for accessibility and to check that here as well, the label is translatable. Um, here I, again, probably the title shouldn't be there, but we'll have a look at this uh, when we actually test uh, the UI. Um, so yeah, I quite actually do this just to mark for things for further testing, essentially. Um, and it's also much nicer for developers if the bug report can involve, can, can pinpoint which specific line to change. Okay, so looking at this table template, um, breadcrumbs. Um, so this could be something that you mark as a, a navigation landmark for screen reader users so that they know right away where to look for those breadcrumbs and can jump straight to that. Uh, we'll confirm that when testing. Translatable labels, that's great. Okay, I see that there is a separator between the breadcrumbs items. We just want to make sure that this is announced in a way that screen reader users can understand, but should be no problem with that. Um, I see there is an H1 with the metric label. I don't see the page this uh, title meta being set, but I assume it, it might match this. Uh, that's kind of what we'd expect anyway toolbar with description okay h2 all right that seems okay at least as far as i can tell in the html um i see there's a notion of uh, metrics being selected here will be good to see how that works in practice 
and whether screen reader users can tell what is selected. Uh, here I see the title again on the A tag. I, it might be done for truncation purposes maybe, but again, I'm probably not sure what, why this is needed. Table, caption, great, T head with a row, with TH scope, that's perfect. Honestly, I wish all of the tables I audited were like this. I see there is some table sorting going on. Um, this, in this case, the title attribute probably is correct because you do want this to be visible to screen your users without, and, and also cited users, if they know to hover the thing without um, getting in the way of the table layout. Um, we want to test that further, obviously. And then the body, so the rows, there is some cycling, I assume for stylistic purposes. And I have no idea what this is. <laughs> okay, so, so far so good. Um, yeah, and I see that this is using the base templates from the admin. Um, just checking that I haven't forgotten anything else. Have a quick look at the styles potentially. So there is a base style sheet. Um, mm -hmm. So we want to check how this, whether this icon has some alternative text for screen reader users. Um, we want to check the, co the contrast of those colors, obviously. I see here it's using floats left and right. Um, Oh, this might just be because it's following what the admin does. But uh, if you want to support right to left languages, it's much nicer if you can do layouts with um, um, Flexbox and CSS Grid, because then you won't have to, yeah, you won't have to override how you set the float based on physical properties left and right. If you if you use if you do this with Flexbox, it will automatically pivot your layout without you having to write the styles twice. Uh, same for this, you can use a logical um, padding inline start and padding, padding inline end properties and uh, that way you only have to write the styles once and browsers will automatically apply them left or right based on the uh, RTL direction. Okay, I'm going to give that a pass, at least for now. I need to actually look at a uh, report, the, the things I might have found, then the UI. So. We're in the Django admin. I'll start with my most basic automated tests with the XPT Insights extension. Okay, <laughs> there are some issues. Um, color contrast, color contrast, color contrast. <laughs> okay, all of these are color contrast issues, which I think likely come from the Django um, CSS directly, not these projects. So I won't spend too much time on them. Definitely want to report them, but they aren't worth further immediate attention. I will disable the colors. Yeah, nothing too, too out, out, outrageous there. It might be quite hard to see this edit icon, but um, I think since it's just there as a decoration with next to the label, it should be completely, completely okay. Headings. H1, H1, H2, H3, that's all Django. Landmarks, no landmarks, that's quite bad, but that's all, all Django as well, I assume. Tab stops, always worth a quick check in which order we tab through the items on the page, whether it's logical or not. Uh, logical generally meaning left to top to bottom, left to right. That looks quite good to me. Would be nice to have a skip link so that I can go straight from here to the content there. Um, but again, that's just a Django thing, not with this specific extension. Needs review. What is needs review? Oh, interesting. I haven't seen this before. Okay. I don't know what was the thing that needed the review, but we'll leave this there for now. Um, Quick check through some of the other pages. Oh, contrast, contrast. I imagine this is the breadcrumb we had seen earlier. Might be worth checking how tabbing through this looks. This doesn't look readable enough. Um, I 
assume this might be the selected. Oh no, this would be selected. Yes, we'll need to look into this with um, a screen reader as well, see how it announces, but this seems like it's not enough contrast at all. Um, let's do a quick check of this, this specific color because it feels like it's probably the worst one that I could spot on the page. Um, mm -hmm. Breadcrumbs foreground. Color contrast isn't isn't such a binary thing as as pass fail, you know, for when people actually uh, look at pages. Um, but still, this is this is very poor. Um, so you can't expect people to be able to read this. I I, I assume this is a Django issue, though not a, a Postgres metrics issue. Um, and I I assume all of the other ones are similar contrast failures. So I won't spend too much time on these. Um, mm. This is this is um, not a contrast issue, but it can be quite problematic for screen reader users to have full URLs like this because it will literally announce all of the text character by character. So it will announce HTTP colon slash slash www dot c r i a i g and so on which which isn't that pleasant to read um and particularly in link within link text like this i believe that lots of screen readers won't allow people to navigate to skip some of the text of the link that easily compared to in, in copy where navigating character by character is very straightforward and you can also skip the whole block um, so for links, I would strongly suggest not to have them as URLs for the label like this. Um, it's not always a big of a deal, you know, if the link is quite short and only contains plain, plain language words, it could be fine. But in this case, at, at least removing the beginning here would definitely help and adding a proper label would definitely be better. What's the difference between clicking here and clicking show? Okay, no difference. Um, get back to that a bit later, I think. A uh, quick tab check through this. I wouldn't have expected it to jump there. So this is the navigation, the same navigation as on the, on the index, right? Yeah. Um, I'm a bit surprised my, my tab jumps from top left to essentially right column. I feel like I should probably go through the left column first. Um, or if there was some kind of skip link, it would be it could it could be okay, I suppose. It's just a bit bit confusing. I I don't find it particularly helpful because it's navigation that's already repeated on the main page anyway. So it just gets in the way of you actually reaching the table if you want to tap through the table instead. So table mm, says something going going weird as well here. So I'll, I'll reload this with um, the tab stop visualization. Okay, so so far, apart from this diagonal line, this all makes sense to me. Then here, what's quite weird is that it starts with the ordering feature toggle sorting and then this and then there and then that so it should it should definitely be left to right within the table um, header okay and then we jump to the next table with the same thing going on yeah that uh, definitely top left top top bottom sorry and then left right um, Okay, this looks very similar. This looks the same but with a slightly different theme. Mm, and we have the same thing here with um, the links. We'll have a look at how that's announced together a bit later. Um, okay, I think that's probably as far as we can get with automated checks. Um, we did spot, oh sorry, automated checks, that's here. We did spot a few issues, 
but uh, most of them will Django itself. Keyboard navigation we did as well, at least very briefly. Color contrast, dark mode support. Um, Mm, I, I can spot as well as we talk through this that we did see the H1 being set correctly, but I can see in my browser tab here that the title of the page isn't set correctly. So this would be quite problematic for a screen reader user who'd rely on the title being announced when they, they arrive on the page to tell what the page is. 90% um, of the time you want this to just match, at least as the baseline, you always want it to match the page's H1. So here it should be index, size, Vertical separator, Django site admin. Um, I suspect this might be due to how this is customizing the base template for Django. Um, I mean, it could be pretty straightforward to fix and would be quite a nice improvement. Um, dark mode support. <laughs> so, dark mode. So the Django admin supports dark mode since a few versions ago. And it's always an interesting thing to test people because people do rely on change customizing how pages are displayed with other either user style sheets or browser extensions or dark mode to just accommodate their vision. Uh, you know, based on the time of the day or just how tired you might think you might be. Um, okay, so most yeah. Um, most of this looks completely fine, just a revert uh, light on dark rather than the opposite. But those rows have a problem. Um, I imagine it must be a co might be a color that's customized uh, with one of the hard coded values we s we saw in the style sheets. We need to check whether that's a green or not. Um, so the issue might just be that Django still still does swap the. Uh, color of the text, but doesn't know how to swap the color of this row. So if people if people want to support dark mode in their extension, um, they would need to make sure to use um, CSS variables like Django does. So the color swaps here as well. Yeah, I mean you can you can see this is completely unreadable. So at this stage. If I could make the connection as a user that this was a dark mode issue, I could swap back to light mode potentially and be a bit annoyed. Um, but if I don't make the connection, then I just can't read this um, table header. Not supporting dark mode probably isn't a, a failure of any XCPT standard, but contrast issues definitely are. I, I assume this is the same situation here. Uh, let's look a, do, do a quick contrast check. Yes, yeah, so this is the only thing that's flagged. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I looked. I saw this one a bit earlier, but here the whole table is basically unreadable. Um, so I, I think it's quite common for, for, for developers to use dark mode, um, hence why Django has support for it. So I definitely expect this to look equally as good and at the very least be readable. Okay. I have everything in dark mode myself, um, most of the times, except for audits. Um, so yeah, I definitely appreciate when people take some time to support it. And here, since Django does set the expectation that it's supported, I think it's quite important for Django packages to also support it. Uh, right to left support is the exact same situation where Django supports it. So I think it's good as a baseline for extensions to do the same thing. Um, I'll just test it the quick and dirty way by changing the value of the dear attributes in the page and looking into any issues. Uh, quick word of warning that uh, right to left support isn't one of my specialties at all. So I'll be doing this very naively and I might be missing very basic uh, issues. But still worth 
Taking a look. Hmm. What's this? So here, recent actions. Mm, yeah, it's just, it looks a bit odd because the layout is different, but it's not a, it's not a right to left support issue. And this is though, I think this heading would be meant to be right aligned in here. Why are you not right aligned? text align left is this one of the customizations from the extension i can't tell doesn't seem to be i would have expected this to be right aligned um so similarly here this looks like yeah it might be a django issue similarly here if you do text align start which is a logical value you don't have to do anything else you can just set it to the logical value always and then whichever direction you're in it will automatically swap the browser will automatically know to swap so do use those logical properties if you if you don't have to support legacy browsers essentially um, same here it looks like the labels of the header cells are left aligned and the ordering still is on the on the on the right side so this should be swapped around can't tell exactly where that issue comes from but yeah and i think i think all of the other pages would would ha have the exact same issues so i'll keep keep this brief yeah this needs to be right this needs to be left and let's see how easy that might be to fix with Yeah, so padding right, padding inline and, and then we can just change that once, don't have to set it again one way or the other based on the, based on the um, RTL direction. Here the padding is symmetrical, so we don't necessarily need to change the property that is set. text align start rather than left and we don't doesn't seem like we are too far off um there is a clear fix is that a clear fix yeah so don't 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 use floats layouts in um 2021 if you can avoid it of course if if your code is already written like this it's okay but um, it's just making your job harder later on. Um, so the thing that would be floated would be the f sort options. Yeah, so we could do float and inline and I believe that would that would swap it okay. Um, hmm, I'd, but yeah, that's something I I would generally recommend against, and I would use um, flexbox or CSS grid instead because they are much nicer to work with than floats. Uh, but there are logical properties for float as well. Um, I will leave this there because I think that's enough for now and I got stuck. And so screen reader navigation is probably one of the most useful things to do because it's a good test of everything else essentially and because for people who rely on screen readers to navigate Django, not having support for it basically usually means they can't use the, your site at all. Um, whereas some of the other issues you might have, you might have ways to work around them. Uh, I forgot something from my list that I want to cover very briefly, which is, uh, I guess mobile support might be a good term, no, not really mobile support. I don't think it's that big of a deal for this not to work on mobile devices, but at least the layout should still be usable on smaller screen widths. Um, you probably want to test this properly with, with touch, touch input as well, but for now we'll just test uh, the screen width support. Um, so this reflows. So this isn't, this isn't ideal. Um, although I appreciate that tables are always hard like this. Uh, what I would suggest with something like this is to make sure that the page itself doesn't reflow 
but only the table is scrollable left to right so you don't have to work that hard to just make sure that the table overflows the content and then only the table is scrollable um, this isn't one of my areas of expertise either but generally the idea is that you don't want people to have to scroll into two directions at the same time to look at your content you want your content to be visible with scrolling in a single direction so that the movement can be more precise so yeah in this case prevent the page from reflowing still have your table overflow but then just the table is scrollable and nothing else and obviously you could make nicer things if you wanted to make the mobile experience nicer but this isn't necessarily a problem here um, for this not to have stellar mobile support links same uh, one of other reason why links like this link labels like this are bad is that they don't reflow that easily um, we could add like um, not thin spaces but spaces that zero width spaces to indicate to the browser where to where to cut but it's just much nicer to use a, a label that people can read um, here on the cache hits i'm just noticing this it feels like it's probably very little contrast for you to notice which of these is active um, if i Disable the colors. Yeah, I mean, if I'm colorblind, it's really hard for me to tell which of these things is the one that's currently active. So I'll suggest an underline as a style rather than the, the text. Um, this is also, yeah, this 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 is also using using the the text color, but it's using the text color of a link the one that's active and that probably you shouldn't need to click and the text color of text for the ones that aren't active so i probably suggest some some other style in here not quite sure exactly what to suggest but at least there should be enough contrast so that you can distinguish which of these is the active one um, even if you're colorblind and some indication of which one is selected without color i know there is this thing right there but this definitely doesn't have enough contrast against the background um, the color contrast for this would be 3 to 1, the con color contrast ratio and I'm pretty sure this isn't anywhere near 3 to 1 mm, what color are you, background? yeah this isn't <laughs> three to one contrast ratio uh, so yeah better indicator clearer contrast and indicator that doesn't rely on contrast um yeah all, all of all of the other pages are equally will equally have the same issue with tables and the links so i probably would leave it there for now might want to think carefully of how the the numbers reflow as well if that's a thing um I'm not quite sure whether this is meant to be read by me or not, but I would want to, if it is, well, I assume it is, just don't know whether I, as a user of this, I'd be able to tell what the number is exactly, but we might want to think of um, adding adding numerical, assuming this is an integer that is a quantity. Um, Assuming this is an integer that is a quantity, having some separators would make this much easier to read and would um, make this more likely to be understandable when it reflows like this or prevent, prevent it from reflowing when the text wraps like this altogether. I think it would be completely fine in this case if the table was gigantic, as long as it doesn't make the whole page reflow and just the table is scrollable. Yeah, I have a feeling for everything, numer numeric separators would be a nice improvement. Okay. Screen readers. So I'm on a Mac. Screen reader that's built into Macs is Safari, it's voiceover. And um, 
VoiceOver has the best support in Safari. So we'll switch over to Safari to test this. Okay, we'll start from here. VoiceOver on Safari, site administration vertical line Django site admin win. Okay, I have enabled Safari. You should be able to hear this just fine, but there's also a text version of uh, the text-to-speech output of Safari in the bottom right. And um, inside, you can see this um, two-tone two cursor. That's Safari's cursor, which is based on keyboard navigation, but is different than the normal keyboard navigation with the tab keys, just as an FYI. And then whenever I arrive on an element, um, Safari, sorry, VoiceOver will announce that element's name. Links menu. Visited. Link. Ch links menu. So have a you are currently in a UI, which I can get open for Safari to uh, allow me to navigate through the whole page. Uh, I don't think. Link. Change password. You are currently on a link. VoiceOver off. Uh I don't think this Rotor UI shows up on the screen share. I'll see if I can configure this. Um, why don't you show up on the screen share what are you I okay that's because I had my screen set up the wrong way around mm -mm. so you go there and you go there as well yes Sorry for the small hiccup. Just making sure I set this up the correct way again. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Where are you, Gather Town? Here you are. Okay, so we are back in Safari. Get this back open. Voiceover on Safari. Site administration vertical line Django site admin window. Site administration vertical line Django site admin web content has links menu. Yay, you are currently at escape button. Escape button. Visit link. Re visited link. Log out. Site administration for F5 button. Search button. F5 button. Voiceover off. All right. I think we're good to go. So, voiceover. Voiceover on Safari. Inside administration. Welcome. Visit. Well, visited. Heading level one. Link. Django. I have lost my. <laughs> I have lost my cursor for some reason. Um, let's try. Voiceover off. Off. Close Safari. And restart it. Voiceover on Safari, site admin, inside administration vertical, All right. links menu. So this allows us to navigate through all of the links on the page. This is why it's important for accessibility that all of the links should have unique labels <laughs> as we see here and that um, the labels make sense without context. Visited, link, link, show. So this is a bad example, obviously um, we have Three, six, seven links that say show that have the same label. No idea to tell. To, no, there's no way to tell which one shows what. At least the icon doesn't display in the link text and isn't announced. That's perfectly. That's exactly what we want. Uh, but this should say um, show detailed index usage for for this specific example. Um, it, it you shouldn't you shouldn't have to know where the link is on the page to make sense of what it takes you to. Headings menu, v heading level, he visited, heading level one, site administration. I'm pretty odd to have two H1s like this. They probably shouldn't be. Visited, heading level one, link, then, uh, Django administration. 
because the point of the h1 is to be describing the contents of the page which should be unique to each and every page um, that's a Django, Django no page. item tables menu uh, p o s t g r e s q l metrics two columns seven rows um so the table is labeled that's great but uh, p o s t g r e s q l metrics two columns seven rows as you can tell um voiceover announces it by spelling out each of the letters I think it might be because of the uppercase. Authentication and authorization. P O S T G R E S Q L metrics two columns. Windows links met heading. This is visit visited heading level one link. Django voiceover off. Because it's quite. I mean, it would be quite painful for someone using a screen reader to have it described Postgres as P O S D and so on. Obviously, you, you could you should still be able to make sense of. Um, what this links to if you had to use it, but it's just not that pleasant. Let's try it again. Voice administration authenticate link. R visited link chain end of table heading level two he PostgreSQL metrics table two columns seven. Yes, you can already tell how much nicer it is to hear it like this. It might not be the perfect pronunciation but it's definitely much more pleasant. Um, it's a common misconception that applying a percasing like this with CSS then means that it's not picked up as screen readers. That's, that's maybe not completely false, but I defen definitely dependent on each and every screen reader and um, they definitely understand CSS and use it. So in this case, no PostgreSQL metrics table. I, f I would argue that this is easier to read for people because you know SQL is meant to be uppercase and announced letter by letter. And this is also nicer for screen reader users uh, to have it announced with the, a more correct pronunciation. PostgreSQL metrics table two. I also find it a bit odd just so that we that route. in the page order, visited had it authenticated. I have this table link row and heading and level two recent actions and then the other table that doesn't make that much sense to me. It should again be left. T top bottom first and none bottom. post gray sql match um yeah not quite sure what to think of that. link available extensions column one of two link show column two of two row two of seven available extensions link cache hits column one of two cache hits you are currently on a link link show column two of two um so yeah the show thing doesn't doesn't work at all um because because you can't tell what you're showing. Um, and the usage of the table like the, for this as well, um, tables are meant to meant to structure data. In this case, it really is just a navigation menu. So uh, I, I know this is because Django, but personally, I would definitely recommend just having this as a list of links. Um, you have a heading that says maybe heading level two PostgreSQL metrics. Maybe you mark that as a navigation region or not, not even that. And then within this list of links, you might have a URL with each of the links that would be much faster to navigate through. Row one of set link, post gray, none of post gray SQL metrics, table two link available. Link. Then the row, row based navigation. It's not, it's not too bad, but, and you can make sense of the, the navigation apart from those show links, but it's definitely not, not the best. Uh, row one, link one available pages. link toggle sorting vertical line django site admin web content what? you are currently on a link inside the cell to click this link press oh. control option space <laughs> let's try that again translation avail link row three of seven available extensions link detailed index usage column one of two visited heading level one link django administration vertical line django translate site admin link Heading none post gray visited visited heading level one link Django. Mm, it might just have noticed that I was focusing on this, or maybe I had this toggled the last time I came here, so that's why I jumped straight to this specific part of the page. Um, Administration. Yeah, so here the visited in vertical line Django site admin web content. Vis yeah, so here this is missing the title of the page, which should match the H one. Visited, vi visited, link, home. So yeah, I think it would be nice for this to be announced as a, a landmark, a navigation landmark called breadcrumb. 
then you'd have a much easier time skipping it as a screener user or jumping straight back to it as you navigate the page. So heading. if it was a landmark, it would show up. No items, table, window, links, me headings, menu. There are no landmarks here, but it would show up in the landmarks navigation of the rotor. V heading level two, P-O-S-T-G-R-E-S-Q-L metrics. We've seen this before, but this should this shouldn't be uppercase. It just makes it harder for people to read the text and for screen readers to announce it with the correct pronunciation. And we've seen it before as well, but there shouldn't be two H1s. The only H1 should be available extensions. No tables menu. Default user equals some user DB N A N E equals S O M E D B. Second user equals other user DB N A N E equals O D H E R D B. Four columns, 72 rows. So I think this is this is probably fine, but just keeping in mind that when you don't have space like this between between words, it makes it harder for screen readers to properly uh, intonate the, the letters. So it might be a bit better overall if there was a space between the equal sign and the and the and the text. But in any case, I think this is probably reasonable enough. Two item window spots links menu visited vi 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 li vi li link link sequence usage. Considering those things have um, have uh, the the specific uh, label here has a, a meaning for developers beyond the UI. Um, this area right there to the left to the right with the navigation links that should definitely be a navigation landmark so that I have an easier way to skip headings it. menu links menu. Escape button, windows, contact tables, me def link, heading level, vi vi visited, link, home. You are, cur vi you are currently on a text element inside web content. This isn't even announced. I'm sh I don't think it would trip any screen reader user, but I would probably suggest making this area hidden just so it's a bit na faster to navigate through the page. Visited, link, post ray SQL metrics. You are yeah, PostgreSQL is definitely nicer. Available extensions. You are currently on a text element inside heading level one. Available extension. PostgreSQL can be extended heading level. Uh, breadcrumbs like this, I believe, is slightly nicer. If this is marked as a link as well, then there is an area current equals page attribute you can add to the link that will make it so screen reader user screen readers announce that this is a link to the current page which makes it easier for people to tell that they are in this specific page of the hierarchy of pages. Heading level one, available extension. PostgreSQL can be extended by installing extensions with the create extension command. Perfect. Heading level two, P-O-S-T-G-R-E. Yeah, I've said plenty about this already. It should be um, a landmark for navi the, uh, nav landmark. And this should uh, be, um, title case, not uppercase, so, it pro so it's pronounced and is more readable. L visited link, l l l visited link, available extension. So here doesn't seem to be any way for screen reader user to tell that this is the currently selected page or that you're in this page. Um, probably like an area current page would solve that as well. Visited default user equals some user db n a m e equals s o m e d b one column one of four. Okay, so I believe this is a Django thing because I've audited it before, but here it should definitely announce the column's name first, and then whatever that is. Link. Toggle sorting. You are current. Link. Name. You are currently on a link. Inside. Link. Default version. Column 2. Link. 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 Yeah, so here my preference would be for it to say first link name and or link toggle sorting for name. I'm not quite sure why there is two links to start with, but maybe there is a reason. And then the one, um, I mean, even as a sighted user, I have no idea what this is. Link, link, default version, column two of four. Link, row two of 70 to one in name, admin pack, column one of four. You are current. So here you could say it started row, row announcing the cell with one and name. Um, that's because it's reading the name of the cell because of the header cell because this is this header cell is marked as scope equals color. That's what you want, but it does mean that the one shows up in all of the cells here, which might be very confusing or at least for me, I, I 
don't really know what this is meant to be doing and the fact it's using one while the navigation through the table also uses numerals to indicate which row and column you're on is um is quite confusing default version 2.0 column 2 of 4 in com row 3 of 72 one in name am check column 1 of 4 you are currently on it so what would be interesting here is to is to navigate through this uh PLPG SQL row and figure out if there is any kind of announcement of why this is in a different color. I can't really tell, at least from the comma in text, tri out of text, row 20, default version 1.0 in text, 1. Point out install, row 20, install, install, row 4, com row, in row 50. Sorry, you had to watch me go through this. I'm pretty sure that someone who uses a screen reader on a daily basis would know the commands to navigate this row by row rather than have to navigate through all of the cells like this. Default install comment. Yeah, so as far as I can tell, there is no indication of why this row is special. Um, there isn't any indication for sighted users either, so I'm not sure why it matters, to be honest. Um, it might be more obvious for people who actually use this software on a frequent basis or spend time looking at Postgres metrics. Um, but if that's the case, we would want to make sure that there is some indication for screen reader users as well, some, some programmatic way to tell that this is a special role. Let's look through a Visited few heading pages. level one. Tables menu. Window, links menu. V link. HTTP colon slash slash www dot slash 2012 slash 10 slash 01 slash understanding dash postgres dash performance slash Yeah, so that's a good example because it was definitely quite verbose and I would assume not as nice as a, as a proper label so in particular we could see that it, it could pronounce the domain name as a name because I assume voiceover has some understanding of um um, Anglo-Saxon names, but it couldn't properly pronounce the dates, the months, the, the year, the, the months and the day, and it couldn't properly pronounce Postgres either. Um, I assume because it kind of tell that it, it can tell that this is a URL or it can't, it can't tell that this is a separate word. Um, so I would, I would definitely be DBNAME equals that. Oops. Switching this to link HTTP colon slash slash W something that uses um, uses a proper label that matches the slug of the URL. L L link, hits, column two of three, link, ratio, col visited, heading level, heading level one, so cap, links are there, so you can do the sorting. D link, link, hits, col So it should say like, sort by hits, rather than just hits. Otherwise you'd expect this to take you to a page just about hits, which it clearly isn't. Oh, so that's quite bad, but I think that's a drink. One link, link wrote hits reads five hits four hundred twenty five one in ratio zero point nine eight eight three seven two zero nine three zero. Yeah, so one and ratio like you don't definitely don't want this to say one as it's reading some other numbers. It's just very confusing. Um, and and yeah, this is using uppercase for the labels as well. So there's much bigger of a change for voiceover to, to mispronounce it and i'm not quite sure why this is in a different color um but it doesn't seem like there is a way to, for screen reader users to programmatically know that it's in a different color voiceover off um, let's quickly look at how the page is structured and why this is highlighted or how this is highlighted hmm. so it says warning here right there so it should at least say warning then announce the number rather than having no way to tell that there is anything special about this. Um, I assume this might be a similar situation for the other rows we saw where they were special in some way that the class name could tell us about. Yeah, so it says OK. You probably wouldn't <laughs> want it to say OK for literally all of the rows in this specific case. Um, or maybe you would if it's important. Hmm. 
Let's look at how it announces those numerals. 2147483647. Selected. Menu. Three items. Closing menu. 2147483647. Interesting that my browser de de detects this as a phone number. Menu. Three <laughs> items. To have me call Closing. This. I have a feeling that we probably want to disable that in Django, the phone number uh, auto detection on browsers and or format this as a numeral with separators where appropriate. Row one, link, one, max value, 2147483647. Yeah, so here as well, I assume that if it had separators, voiceover it would, off. It would probably be easier for voiceover to pronounce it more properly. Um, again, assuming that this is not an identifier and definitely some kind of quantity. Um, I forget what the proper separators are meant to be in in um, British or American English. So forgive me if this is the wrong ones. None. Selected. Max value. 2,147,483,647. Assuming this is a numerical quantity, uh, this is definitely much nicer of an announcement. Um, well worth considering in my opinion. Visited heading level one link jet tab select total size 24 kilobytes column two of set. Yeah, so you can see here even even though it just says KB, the screen reader knows what, what, is, what is going on and gives it a more proper announcement. S -s 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 total size 56 kilo table size 8192 bytes. In this case, it's smart enough to know it's a quantity for some reason. It might just be that the number is small and at the specific length, it would change its announcement. Uh, let's look at this link very briefly. Visibility, select, see also the, the, the size of star fork refers to the main data fork, the free space map FSM, visibility map VM, and the initialization fork. You are currently, see also the That's all quite great. link. HTTPS colon slash slash www.postgresql.org slash docs slash current slash storage dot html. This one isn't too bad, but it would definitely be nicer if it pronounced Postgres correctly. Here I would just move this link over to say Postgres documentation on the physical storage. And there's a small on select right there. That might be my first pull request to the project. Um, yeah, and I think we've Probably leave it there for voiceover for now. Voiceover off. And let's check where we are at in my testing plan. Um, not this dark. Where is my is that the one? That's the one. Uh, mm -hmm. UI done docs and the readme. I'll do the readme first. I feel like it's could could be nice and quick. Hopefully this is an H1. I don't know how readable those badges are for screen reader users, but we'll take a look. Um, contrast looks quite good. It's just not not a bad idea. Not a good idea generally to have text in images like this, but. Everyone does it. Um, yeah, let's just look at the alt text for them. Uh, good link, good link. Can't really tell that these are two different links, but I imagine it's not, oops. Not that big of a deal. Um, well, this all looks quite great. I didn't know GitHub did that with the copy paste buttons. I'm not quite sure what this asterisk refers to right there, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, great screenshot. It's a bit blurry for me, but that's. I think com most likely completely fine. We'll just want to check what alt text there is for this. I see there is a link to the actual file, which is quite good if people want to look at a bigger version of the same thing. 
it's always a good practice whenever you can to, to make this possible Um, I see there is an email address like this. Um, might want to check quickly what screen reader user what screen readers will announce for this, but I assume this is fine. Yeah, this all looks quite good. Um, let's try out those badges. Voiceover on Chrome. Quick disclaimer here that I don't really know how good GitHub itself is a screen reader, so I'll jump straight to the README. Visited link DJ and GOPOSTGRES metrics article. Okay, so the announcement of the project name isn't so good. Um, I think it would, could be nice to to title this Django as a noun, Postgres as a noun, metrics with spaces and proper capitalization. Uh, I quite like myself to also put the project's PyPI package name in the H1 like this, but in this case, it does feel like it makes it harder for screen readers to announce it properly. Probably not a deal breaker. If someone uses your project with frequently, they'll be used to this. But it's worth keeping in mind that there are consequences to using uh, this kind of kebab case through the announcements. That, that's DJ and GOPOSTGRES metrics. Yeah, that's what we'll be able to make. DJ and G DJ and in text. Out of DJ, DJ D out of heading link it heading level one D, link image GitHub workflow status branch. Yes, yeah, so this literally should say build passing, like link build passing. Uh, it should match exactly what the text in the image is. I assume this is better than nothing to have um, to have the alt text point that is the GitHub workflow status for the branch, but. It's not as good as what the sighted user would expect. Link image code cough branch. Same here. It should say coverage hundred percent. Link image read the docs. I should say docs passing. Um, I th I think you know this is just a limitation of this type of badge um, UI. Unfortunately, that there is no way for the alt text of the image to be automatically generated based on the status. Um, so the only fix here would be stop using badges, which probably doesn't doesn't help anyone. So I'll probably just make sure to say build status. Potentially Chrome canary ha coverage status potentially or coverage percentage, and and so on. Visited link image version. Link image license. Assuming your license never changes, just have the light alt text for this say license BSD. Python link link image Python versions. You are currently on a link. So what happens if Chrome Canary has web content? Python 3.5 vertical line three visited link. This probably shouldn't be a Chrome Canary has new window. Voice over off. Oh. Yeah, this shouldn't be a link to the image. If anything, it should be a link to somewhere that is taste the versions in a text format. Um so I could make sense of it. And I'll assume it's the same issue for the Django badge. Voice Django selected Django heading level two background at link PyCon Canada 2017. You are currently on a link to click the I'll skip through most of the article heading level one at link start by installing DJ and GOPOSTGRES metrics from PyPI. You are in this case, I don't think there's any walking around the fact that it um, announces it like this. And you work. Vis import. Left. Add. Period. Article. Heading. Link. No. Earl. Admin. Visited. Link. This is what a metric could look like. Visited. Link. Image. Metric example. So in this case, I would suggest. Chrome Canary has new. I assume the link uses the image alt text. I think it would be nice for that to say screenshot of the Django Postgres metrics um, UI and then have a maybe 10 to 20 words description of the screenshots content. You don't want it to be crazy long because there might not be a way for people to skip some of these with the screen reader, but you do want it to somewhat describe what is going on on the image. So in this case, 
you might say screenshots of the detailed index usage view with some help text and a table with metrics for each database table something like that issue selected i'm work if you found or if you think you found a security issue please get in touch by info plus d j a n g o p o s t g r e s metric star a t star marco scholterman star d o d star u you are currently on attack so the only things worth mentioning here is that at this should be pronounced at it's 12 hours be worth trying a lowercase at D O T. this should be dot so it might be worth trying a lowercase dot otherwise i think this is, this is okay Small hey typo. selected okay voice over off now uh on to read the docs i have never audited one of those sites before so we might just decide to cut it short if it's if it's oh okay <laughs> Yeah, I probably won't uh, won't talk through all of this. We might keep it for another time. Um, this is the case where if I'm doing this as a professional audit, I'll um, shriek um, because I don't want to be wasting my time manually auditing something that someone didn't even bother to run automated checks for. Um, it's not like those checks are hard to run, you know. Ah, uh, you can definitely see that there is some attention to accessibility, navigation landmark. That's great, but if there is three of them on the page, each of them should have a name. It looks a bit odd to have a navigation landmark within another navigation landmark. Uh, main navigation, navigation. That sounds like something that would be announced twice. The navigation part of this. That's something that probably has never been tested with a screen reader. Um, main looks quite good. Footer looks quite good. Oh no, footer looks terrible. There's nothing in it. Content info, that looks great, but you should also add, include this right there. Quick tab stops check. Hang on, it didn't go through the nav. Okay, probably just me clicking on the wrong thing. This is obviously missing a skip link, so you can jump straight from the first tab stop to the contents. How do I reach the version picker? I can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so the reader docs link and version picker right there seem to be impossible to reach with the keyboard. Um, don't know how big of a deal it is for this project. Um, if there might be other ways to reach the different versions, the search is there. I guess the GitHub links probably are in other places. Um, but still you, you'd want all of the features of your site to be to be reachable with the keyboard that's a pretty basic accessibility 101 thing that everything should be accessible not just with a mouse but with other input devices um yeah sorry i shouldn't be too sour but it's just <laughs> when the automated checks come up with so many issues to start with i know i'm going to have a bad time um should be a single H1. Should be easy to fix. Let's look at a few other pages. Looks completely fine to me. This looks a lot like the readme plus some extra information. Wanna check the alt text for this screenshot again. I wanna check how that's announced. That looks maybe like a definition list. Um, Um, what did I have in my list? Automated checks, keyboard navigation, color contrast, dark mode support. Do you want to try dark mode support? I guess we might as well. Um, 
Mm -hmm. I'm just changing this in my um, my OS settings. It makes no difference. That's okay. It just doesn't support it. RTL support. I don't think we need to look at this now. Mobile support. We'll do a very quick check because I assume it is quite valuable. We, let's say a conference environment for people to be able to look at your docs in a mobile device to learn about your project. Um, this looks this looks okay. You might want to check that this is navigable with a screen reader, but apart from that, this looks fine. There is no reflow. Um, what do I have next? Screen reader navigation. Yay. Let's head back to Safari. Voiceover on Safari. Welcome to DJANGOPOSTGRES Metrics's documentation. DJANGOPOSTGRES Metrics 0.9.1.TEV2 plus G82685 documentation window. Welcome to DJANGOPOSTGRES Metrics's documentation. DJ <laughs> the title is very verbose. Um, first of all, because of the project name not being something that can be pronounced. Um, Safari has new window. Oops. I imagine that might be something worthwhile to fix. And then the the project name is repeated next to the version number. Um, I feel like I really would want, want this project name to only be there once in this heading. In this in this title, sorry. Welcome in welcome to DJANGOPOSTGRES metrics. Okay, so this would be a good, this would be a good one for us to test with the rot. Links menu. Link. DJANGOPOSTGRES metrics. So we can see that the icon appears here. It's probably because it's using a font icon. Um, VoiceOver on Safari is smart enough not to mispronounce it as some gibberish character. But I believe VoiceOver on iOS might have trouble with this. Um, might give it a quick, quick whirl later on. Link, getting link, link, ref, link, link, image, house hired devs 03 underscore <laughs> zbiox 7 mpng Yeah, so read the docs ads uh, <laughs> have complete gibberish alt text. Um, this is quite an egregious example because the image like literally is only text and it's quite short text so there is no reason why the images alt text couldn't just be hiring for python while is open job and, and so on uh here the alt text is the image file name actually it isn't it's something even worse link than image house hired devs 03 underscore zbiox 7 mpng uh, this this is pretty bad. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but this this is basically the ad is um, impossible to see for screen reader users. Um, I'm I'm sure they they won't mind skipping the ad, but it just is content on the page that they can't understand what the content is for and whether it matters or not. Link support open so link sponsored link ad served ethically link docs link edit on GitHub link background. Why? Link. Get headings. Me heading level one. Heading level one. Indices and table. But we've already seen that. This more fact, just needs to be switched to a form. Control. No item. Form. Search doc. Search tech. No item. Landmarks. Navigation. Search. Navigation. Search. Main navigation. Navigation. Yes. Whenever you make an a label for a landmark like this, it should only have. It shouldn't repeat the landmark name in the label which just say main and then we will say main navigation breadcrumbs navigation a single time you don't need to repeat the landmark uh, name or role in the label window landmarks menu Obviously, this is something where if you open a screen reader once on a page you'll notice it right away windows links menu link link deep latest you are currently on a text this is probably failing the contrast. Search, end, main navigation, contents, list five items, L link, L end of, main navigation, end, L list five contents. Yes, see, this is what Django should do. Main contents. A label. List five items. 
a list. Link, background. Each item in the list is a link, and that's it. No need to have a table. Link, l- 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 end of, end of, link, 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 middle, list one item. Link, doc. Welcome to DJANGO, link, edit on GitHub. End of, li- horizontal separator, end of, main. He- list five item, link, li- list three items, level two, link, getting started. 80. I'll just have a quick look at that screen. Getting st- further down, and I think probably leave it there for now. Link, horizontal. From DJ er, it, r, metric example image. Yeah, so this is the same as the readme, and again, we probably just wanted to have a bit more alt text. Um, might be worth a check. Voice over off. From here, I can look at the higher res version. No, it would be nice to have a link to the higher to our, the full image, so that I can see what's on there, because the text is very small on this screenshot, and I assume people would like to have a bigger version of it. Um. I want to try one more thing, which is whether I can access the version picker with the screen reader or not. Voice over on Safari. Links menu. 20. Visited. Link. Read the headings menu. You are currently in a voice over menu. Form controls menu. No ID. Landmarks menu. Na- footer navigation. Content information. Content in. Bread. Main navigation. Navi- search. Main na- navigation. Visit. L- search. Search. End, 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 middle, end of na- breadcrumbs navigation. End of navigation. There's no way. Um, let's try it with the keyboard, the, the mouse. New line selected. Versions. Note. Period. Versions. Note. Period. Link. Period. Uh, so it's technically in DOM right after. Versions. Note. Slide, slide you are current. Read the docs. Read the V. Latest. Description list two items. Versions. Link. 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 I mean, there's some semantics in there. It's just completely Voice over unreachable off. unless you're using a mouse, essentially. Um. Yeah. Um. <laughs> It's very nice to use area like this, but if you can't reach it with the keyboard and it doesn't appear in the rotor, this is like not the right thing to focus on. It is somewhere between a premature optimiz- optimization and uh, uh, something that causes issues to people essentially. Um, where is the toggle button for it? Mm, so there is no toggle button, so that's why. Um, if you want to spend time uh, using the proper semantics for an element like this, you should um, first start with HTML elements, so most likely a b- button element for this, and make sure that works correctly first, rather than bother with area like this. Um, there is quite a... Quite a um, famous motto in accessibility world which is that no aria is better than bad aria so this is a case where this is completely pointless um and it would just be better with plain html that uses the correct html semantics of of this being a button um Yeah, nothing looks too bad in here. It's just there is no way to, op- to access this with a keyboard due to lack, lack of a button. And then when it's opened, I can see that there is some classes changing, but I can't see any area attributes to indicate that something is open. So I assume that probably is the issue right here. Um, let's just try Revision. And period. Versions. Note. Read the doc. Yes, yeah, so you can actually access it if it's open. Space. Right. Others and let you pick versions. Note, read the doc version. The you, latest. Yeah. So all that's missing is really just a way to tell where this is on the page and toggle it open. Voice over off. Um, what's the notes region? Oh. That's going to be lots of nodes. Can't find it. So yeah, probably not a node. 
Okay, where are we? Looks like that's it. Thanks again, Marcus. I'll make sure to open an issue for all of this. And um, yeah, I believe that docs issue the majority are with the docs. The only ones I could spot with your project are a few very small things like this not being the right heading level. That's 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 very small in the actual documentation content. Uh, just thinking of the alt text and having a way to open the high res image for this screenshot. That should be very straightforward to fix. And back in GitHub, thinking of whether you want to change the project's name right there so it's pronounced in a way that's more intelligible with um, text to speech. The badges, thinking of what alt text to use for them, but honestly, they are understandable enough as they are. It's just making sure that when you click them, ideally they should link to some place where you can read the actual value rather than linking to the image. Um, the dots and the ads in the email address like this, it's something very small. I wouldn't worry about too much, but it's worth keeping in mind if you want to improve this a bit. And then in the admin, um, we had the links like this, just using uh, labels for them would be nicer. Um, we had the numerals formatting, I think would be would be worth a look, but you might disagree. You might might think that this is more sensible for users to read the, the value without any formatting, depending on what the value is, you know, that's, that's completely fair. I uh, want to check the, the highlight colors here, that there is a way to programmatically uh, annotate which... Where was the one that was the warning? Yes, uh, annotate which um, type of values is meant to be displayed. So here it should say warning for screen reader users. Um, a few small things about right to left support, but honestly, the fact that it's there already in some form is, is quite great. And yeah, for the tables for smaller screen widths, if you can make it so, resizing those pages would uh, still allow the table to overflow. I think that would be much nicer than having those very small tables that that's still overflow the whole page on smaller viewports. And we didn't look at those title attributes. I assume, I thought the screen readers would announce it twice, but maybe they have some special logic that if the title matches the label of the text, then they only say so once. Yeah, I can see the title is discarded here in the accessibility computed um, name for the field. Uh, so that might be what's happening. But yeah, I, I don't think these are these are useful. I would suggest removing them generally. It's a, um, a bad idea to have extra titles like this. Um, we had the same thing for sorting, but there's just so many issues with Django's column sorting to start with that I think it, it would warrant further attention on the Django side before you were to consider any changes on, on your side. Um, oh yeah, and just this indication of the um, currently active thing. I don't think this is in your module, but if so, it would be worth a check. And that's it. I hope this helps. Talk soon.